On this episode of Squawk Pod, the morning after the 2024 election, what a red sweep would mean for the markets. I think you're going to see a united government. I think the country seems to want a united government. I think you're also likely to see the markets go up for a while. Billionaire private equity investor David Rubenstein on the economic road ahead for America's new leadership. You'll have to deal with the deficit issues, but I think the markets don't really care about deficits. That's what we learned. And his message to Democrats as down-ballot races continue rolling in. Life will go on. The country won't fall apart. It's still the strongest country economically, technologically in the world. I'm CNBC producer Katie Kramer. Squawk Pod Election 2024, another episode, starts right now. Donald Trump, the former president and now president-elect, has defeated rival Vice President Kamala Harris and will return to the White House for another four years. Though NBC News didn't call the election until about 5.30 Wednesday morning, the U.S. stock markets were moving, almost like they already knew. Futures for the Dow Jones Industrial Average before the market opened were up over 1,300 points, over 3 percent. Futures for the S&P 500 were up over 2 percent, and the Nasdaq futures were up 1.7. Tech is also upbeat on the news, at least so far. Tech analyst Gene Munster weighed in as we reported the returns on our special four-hour post-election night edition of Squawk Box. The tariffs, the taxes, that piece, that's probably a net mixed neutral. On the regulatory front, this is going to be positive for big tech. There's no question about it. Cryptocurrency Bitcoin climbed to an all-time high of 75,000 overnight. Longtime crypto bull Anthony Pompliano says Trump might achieve everything. But even if he only gets 50 percent done, it would be powerful. If he also creates the Bitcoin Strategic Reserve, I think that'll be a huge tailwind and it'll kick off this global game theory, right? If the United States starts to lean in and uh, welcome Bitcoin and say, hey, this is an asset that we want on our balance sheet, other countries are going to have to respond. Squawk Box anchors Joe Kernan, Becky Quick, and Andrew Ross Sorkin spoke to David Rubenstein, co-founder of the Carlyle Group, which has more than $400 billion under management. The private equity billionaire is on the board of Moderna, owns the Baltimore Orioles. Oh, and he's interviewed four presidents for his most recent book, just published in September. Becky Quick kicks things off. Joining us right now to talk about the implications is David Rubenstein. He is co-founder and co-chairman of the Carlyle Group. And David, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Let's talk about what this means for the markets. You, you have seen the equity markets kind of off and running, a gain of maybe two and three quarters percent for the Dow futures right now. We've also seen Treasury yields higher as well, somewhere between 12 and 14 basis points on the 10 year. Um, what do you think this means for the stock markets, first of all? Clearly, the stock market today will be up very strongly. I think many people in the financial markets were pushing for and wanted a Trump victory, and they got that. But also what you got out of the election appears to be a very strong, united government in the sense that the president is likely to have the House and the Senate, not just a majority, but many people in the House and Senate will feel they got elected because of him. And not since 1964, when Lyndon Lyndon Johnson won overwhelmingly and he had big majorities in the House and the Senate, many of which uh, those seats came about because of Johnson's uh, strong coattails. Did you have a president with this kind of uh, power? So uh, Donald Trump has the power as president to do get a lot done through Congress. And I think members of Congress will go along a lot with, with what he wants. Even when President Obama had majority of the House and the Senate initially, he didn't have quite the coattail effects that I think uh, Donald Trump has had in this election. So I think you're going to see a united government. Uh, I think the country seems to want a united government. I think you're also likely to see um, the markets go up for a while, for sure. So if he has a lot of sway over those senators and especially House Republicans, um, what do you think he will go after first? Because even if you have that kind of sway, you can't do everything at once. How do you think he will prioritize and what do you think the major initiatives are going to be? Well, initially, he said that he will do tariffs. And I I suspect that that doesn't require Congress uh, to be involved. I think his main legislative initiative, though I obviously can't speak for him, would probably be things in the tax area. Uh, his tax cuts from five years ago are, are expiring. And so if he wants to have them extended or enhanced, he'll have to get that done relatively quickly. I suspect if he controls the House Ways and Means Committee and the Senate Finance Committee, it looks like he will. He shouldn't have as much difficulty getting that done. 
you'll have to deal with the deficit issues. But I think the markets don't really care about deficits. That's what we learn. So as long as uh, the markets don't care about deficits and they don't appear to be, I think he can get through his tax legislation. You might argue that that the Treasury market cares a little bit. And, and, And look, we had Gary Cohn saying as recently as last night that he doesn't think that this is necessarily concerned about deficits. You're just seeing the Treasury markets normalize and having higher yields on the back end of the curve. Do uh, you think that's the case? Well, I think the theory will be that, uh, yes, we'll have some deficits for a while, but if economic growth can get to the level we want, that's the best way to solve uh, deficits. Uh, there's no way we're going to solve deficits by cutting spending. We just can't cut the key parts of the government that really are 90 percent of the spending, which are entitlements, defense and interest. The only way you can really get more revenue in is greater economic growth. And I think the markets will assume that that will come about. Um, you know, if you were, you didn't ask me, but if I were to say who are the big loser in this election, it's probably uh, the pollsters. Uh, the pollsters, I think, were not that accurate. And it may be artificial intelligence could be brought to the polling, uh, posting, polling community because you know, they seem to have not really predicted exactly what was happening. And it now is clear that there was a gigantic wave in favor of uh, President Trump. David, uh, to your point about growth and and to your point about dealing with deficits, there's a fascinating piece. I don't know if you had an opportunity to see it. Uh, Larry Fink for BlackRock uh, writing, quote, we need to increase the size of our economy so that we owe uh, so that what we owe becomes smaller relative to what we make. If GDP uh, rate rises at an average of 3 percent in real terms over the next five years. The country's debt to GDP ratio would stay roughly stable at a high but reasonable level. Do you believe that we can get and stay at a 3 percent or above rate, given all of the sort of cross currents that we're just talking about? Nobody knows for certain, but I would say that if you can get 3 percent or three and a half percent growth, it will solve a lot of problems. Right now, the, the budget is basically 90 percent interest De- uh, entitlements, defense spending, and there's no room to really cut there. And and as a result, you've got to only you're only going to get through this with with growth. There's no other way um, that I can see. Okay, let's uh, talk maybe immigration. I, I would think that would be high on his list of things to get past too. Taxes, I understand, tariffs, and and immigration. You think those are the first three? Immigration is an issue that the president can do a fair bit uh, on his own. Um, I don't know whether the president will go. I can't speak for him, but whether he'll try to get legislation through Congress. Clearly, it's very complicated to get that legislation through. But the legislation that was negotiated uh, earlier this year that didn't pass the Congress, um, if he were to support something like that, I suspect it would get through. In the early days of his administration, the first 100 days, he should be able to get a large part of what he wants to get done, just as Roosevelt did. Now, the 100 days is an artificial measurement. But I think if in the first uh, couple months, if President Trump can get uh, united uh, uh, behind a couple ideas, I think he can get those through Congress. Because I think Congress is largely going to go along with what he what he wants, because it's clear that he had coattail effects throughout the nation in ways that the pollsters did not uh, did not see. It, it's I hard to say, imagine too many Republicans standing up to him and saying, no, we're not going to do what you want I, to do. I agree with you. Um, yeah. Four years ago, you invited me on exactly uh, this day, four years ago. And I said then that I thought President Trump would run again. And if you go back and look at the tape, I think you were all skeptical. Um, I didn't anticipate he would exactly do what he did, but I did think that he really wanted to prove that he had won the last time. And I think he he deserves some credit for going through very difficult uh, circumstances. Um, He overcame a lot of financial problems, He overcame a lot of legal problems. And I would not have anticipated he'd been able to do this, but I did think he wanted to run. I should say, uh, finally, that President Biden deserves some credit for what he has done as well. He spent 50 years in public service, um, didn't do many things that he could have done on the private sector, but he really dedicated his life to public service. And I think a lot of things that he did will benefit the country and uh, President Trump. I think the CHIPS Act, for example, the Infrastructure Act will have benefits we'll see for many, many years. So while President Biden will be leaving the political scene, I don't think we should just say that uh, he didn't accomplish a fair bit in four years, even though he didn't control uh, Congress completely the way that uh, President Trump does. Do you do you see the CHIPS Act surviving um, without being yeah. kind of massively changed? At least same story with the IRA. Well, again, I, I can't speak for the president, but I would say the new president, but I would say the IRA will probably have some adjustments. I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't think the IRA will go away because it does have some really good things in it that I think both Republicans and Democrats will like. But I, I do think the CHIPS Act, while it takes a while for it to be felt, it will be beneficial. It takes a while to build a foundry. You can't do it overnight. 
The infrastructure legislation, I do think, has some real benefits people are already seeing. So anybody who's president of the United States should feel that they have a, a mission to unite the country. And President Trump said that last night. He wants to unite the country and try to bring the country together. He isn't going to run for election again. And when you're, you're freed from having to run for election again, I think you can do things that you wouldn't otherwise do. That's not a concern of his in the future. He doesn't have to worry about uh, getting reelected. Um, it's not it's not something that's going to be on his mind. So I think he deserves a lot of credit for bringing this campaign to the conclusion the way that he wanted. Uh, the campaign had a lot of bitterness in it. And uh, clearly, there's going to be some hard feelings for some time. But hopefully he can heal that. And hopefully he can show some uh, grace and, and uh, uh, kindness towards some of his, uh, his uh, competi competitors and political opponents. Because I think the country really wants to be united. And I think the country is looking for some strong leadership right. that can unite the country in a way we haven't you know, been able to do for a while. Here, here, David, on that front. But let me ask you a separate question, which is to the extent that there are going to be folks inside the Democratic Party that hopefully be introspective on a morning like this and in the days and weeks and months to come, what is the lesson? Well, the lesson is that the lesson for Tim, Democrats. I'm sorry. I, I just was going to say NBC just called Montana for she. Okay. So that adds, uh, David, just 52. We are, we're, right. we're waiting. Just be uh, defeating John Tester. Uh, in Montana that boosts the, the GOP Senate majority. Sorry. To, to 52 from to the 52. 51 we already saw. Yep. Well, uh, clearly uh, the Senate is going to be Republican by more than anybody thought. And I think the House, from based on what I've now seen, is likely to be uh, Republican. And as a result, uh, the president has a mandate, I think, to do what, what he wants. Now, we've learned in mandates they can evaporate. And so if you don't get things done in the first six months or so, uh, you, you know, you, you have a problem because eventually people don't like some of the things you want to do. So I think the president is likely to try to do things quickly. By a lot of executive orders, which is what he did before. And I think they'll have a number of executive orders in the beginning, as President Biden did as well. And I think you can get a lot done by executive orders. But I think showing a, uh, a willingness to work with the other side probably can be helpful in getting some of the votes he might need from Democrats, because you can't get everything you want with all Republican votes. But David, I think but, it's an opportunity. But, but, but back to Go the ahead. question about Democrats, if you, if you were going to have dinner this evening, and maybe you are, with you know, an Obama or a Clinton or a Harris or the leadership, whatever you think the leadership even of the Democratic Party looks like, I don't even know if they are the leaders anymore, um, what would you be telling them? Well, life will go on. Uh, the country won't fall apart. It's still the strongest country economically, technologically in the world. We're still the role model for many countries around the world. But clearly, you've got to listen to what the voters want. It's a democracy. And the voters clearly didn't want what some people were selling. And uh, you've got to adjust. Uh, and in the business world, you have to adjust when people don't want to buy your products. And in the political world, if people aren't buying what you want, you've got to adjust. Um, and I think that that's the lesson that we get out get out of this. We also realize that poll, polling is not as, as, as scientific as a, a profession as we, we thought. So while polling is a lot better than it was 10 or 20 or 30 years ago, it's still not perfect. What if what if uh, President Trump want, wants a Democrat? You ready for, for, for whatever he, he wants you for? You're good at things. You're in you know, a lot of things, David. Would you consider it? Uh, I think the best thing for me to do is to help the Baltimore Orioles win a World Series. That's my main mission. <laughs> I was going to say, so, David, I'll run the blind trust. You go into office. It's, I think it's a deal. Uh, or something. Um, I mean, your, your well, talent's wasted if, it's, if ask you would serve. I know you. I think that the best thing for me to do is to uh, appear on your show from time to time when I'm invited, <laughs> help the Orioles, and uh, do the best I can to help my company. I think that there are a lot of younger people than me who can do public service. I did public service 40 years ago. I got inflation to 18 percent. Nobody's invited me back since then. And I think there's probably a good reason for that. So I'm going to stay where I, I am. Forgot, I, yeah. forgot, I forgot about Carter that. Carter years. The Carter years. David Rubenstein, thank you, sir. If the Dodgers get Soto, you might as well give up on the Orioles, too. So. I, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>